Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and AP Statistics. Today we're going to be talking about probability. So a lot of students find probability to be one of the most confusing. So if you're having a little trouble, don't be discouraged. We'll get through it and I think you'll feel a lot more comfortable after this lesson. Today we're going to talk about interpreting probability, so what probability means. We're going to talk about the law of large numbers. We're going to talk about a probability model, what it is, how to describe it. And then we're going to talk about disjoint events, independence versus dependence. And then we'll go through all the rules, the addition rule, multiplication rule, conditional probability, etc. And we'll do a bunch of practice. And then lastly, we'll talk about some simulations. Okay, let's get started. So, interpreting probability. What is probability? If someone tells you that you have a 1 in 50 chance of winning the lottery, what does that mean? So the probability of a random outcome is the proportion of times that outcome would occur in a very, very, probably we should add like five more varies, long run of repetitions, aka the long-term relative frequency, meaning in the long run, what percent would we see? So my example here is flipping a coin, right? If we know that the chance of getting a heads is 50%. That's the probability. But if you flip a coin two times, you're not necessarily going to get one heads and one tails. You'd have to flip it over and over and over again until you get 50% heads and 50% tails. So that is the long-term relative frequency, which is the probability. Okay. So the law of large numbers is the theorem that actually states this whole idea. It says that the number of trials of a random process, right, it has to be random, we can't know what's going to happen already. So the number of trials of a random process, um, sorry, <laughs> as the number of trials of a random process increases, the actual value goes to the expected value. So like I said before, if we flip a coin twice, we may not get 50-50 heads and tails, but the more times we flip a coin, the closer we're going to get to 50% heads and 50% tails. So let's do an example. You hear that in poker, the probability of being dealt three of a kind, so you want three of a kind, in a five card poker hand is one out of 50. What does that mean? So here we have a multiple choice question. So I like to start at the bottom. A probability of 1 out of 50 is somebody's best guess for a probability of being dealt three of a kind. Well, we know that probability isn't just a guess, so it's not that one. If you deal 10,000 poker hands, then 200 of them will contain three of a kind. So that is Okay, so that is the same probability as 1 out of 50, right? But you have to ask yourself, is dealing 10,000 poker hands the true long run frequency? So that may be correct. We'll come back to that one. If you deal 50 poker hands, then one of them will contain three of a kind. Well, 50 is definitely not enough to be able to say this is the long run frequency. So let's look at A. If you deal thousands of poker hands, the fraction of them that will contain three of a kind will be very close to one out of 50. Well, there we go. That is, what do we call it? The law of large numbers. This is exactly what probability theory is telling us. Is it saying if we do something over and over and over and over again, the probability or the true probability will get closer to our expected probability, which in this case is one out of 50. Now, C isn't necessarily wrong. If A hadn't been there, C probably would have been your best bet. But in multiple choice questions, what you have to get good at for AP statistics, it's important to go through all of them. So if you had stopped at C and said, yeah, that's pretty close to correct, you might not have gotten to A. Um, so make sure you read through all of them. Okay, moving on. 